Hello gentle viewers, this is Indian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 22 with the Brooklyn Dodgers, aka Dem Bums. Um, two seasons ago we ran the Tigers, we got fired, and we've been given a bit more leeway with the Tigers. Um, the Dodgers is what they're called, I knew that. You can't prove I didn't. Um, we need to hire some coaches, so we're going to do that first. Um, <clears throat> you know what, Bill, you're getting promoted. And then, I don't have anyone else, so we'll do manager first. Someone good at development, Gene Lansing, welcome aboard, I hope. Uh, we then need a hitting coach. And again, why not get greedy? I don't think these will stick, but we can try. Uh, someone else good at development. Ooh, someone really good at mechanics actually would be really good. Because I think I talked about this in one of the other series, but it can affect like random jumps in people's talent level. So, boop. And another hitting coach, and we might as well go for Danny Taylor. I don't think either of these will work. I think they're going to eventually bid themselves out of the running, but I'll be pretty excited if we can. Um, we're going to have to make some changes to the money, um, or we could just reduce some of our payrolls, but we'll figure it out. Although we are almost 200 grand in the hole. Oh no. Game, what have you done? Huh. How high is our payroll? It's only 13th. <clears throat> that is super weird that all of a sudden I can't afford anything. Man, um, well, we're definitely going to probably do some trading, um, to see if there's anybody that's not very good anymore. Um, but how did last season go for us? Well, the first thing we did is we drafted Johnny Pesky. And offensively, he's everything we could have wanted and more. <clears throat> On the other hand, his defense still needs quite a bit of work. However... His raw talent looks okay, so I'm hoping that as he gets more experience at the Major League level, that he'll eventually become a bit more tolerable. So we need to find players right now that are really expensive, and we probably have too many outfielders. I can conclusively say we have too many outfielders. But a lot's going to depend on who falls to us in this draft. Is there anybody who, like, obviously sucks that's making a whole bunch of money? Um, we will trade Dave Williams if we can get uh, Snuffy Sternweiss. Vern Olsen is pretty good. Yeah, I guess our big issue is that we have a lot of really talented players, all of whom does want to be and deserve to be paid as much as they are. And I can save some money at the margins, but I think it's just my owner being a jerk again. Like, there is no reason to set my budget so low. We've got a pretty decent-sized market. I don't get why I'm being held back. Now, this might get fixed when the year rolls over, because it could just be we haven't sold enough season tickets yet.
Yeah, I think that's the problem. I think I'm getting... We have to wait and see how many season tickets we sell. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and jump through the awards for right now. He does have to be activated, doesn't he? Uh, Gene... Sure. Oh, so it's actually automatically increases to what they want? I didn't realize that. I've been paying people too much. So, right. Yeah. I will get into a bidding war for you because you actually are worth it. Same thing for you too, Bill. That could have saved me so much time when I was just like randomly increasing offers. Lansing signed. Linehauser is still not convinced. Okay, now this is not increasing anymore. So I think this is the game trying to tell me quite clearly that it's not about the money. That it's because he's probably getting like a better job offer. Okay, we got all the coaches we wanted. Delightful. And we won zero awards as a team. Really? I didn't even get Rookie of the Year consideration? Pesky had a pretty darn good year. Nope, he finished second. I mean, Hank Borowi did win 20 games his first season, so... Man, if you're a Yankees fan, this has to drive you nuts. But at least it's a different Boston, so maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know. Alright, I don't think there's much I want to do between now and the draft. Oh, the Hall of Fame voting, of course. All right. If Frank Allen is going to get in, it's probably going to be this year. I'm going to keep going for, for Bancroft there. Um, let me make sure I get the definite locks in. Pete Donahue is... You know what? I will vote for him this time. It's not his fault his career wasn't very long, and the career he did that was pretty awesome. So... Uh, was Frankie Frisch that bad defensively? Oh, I remember his issue. He basically never drew a walk and didn't hit for very much power. Plus, I kind of buried him on the bench the last few years I had him in St. Louis. Um, but I will vote for him anyway because 2,500 hits and a bunch of gold gloves is definitely somewhat worthy of consideration. So we're going to keep on going here. Rabbit Moranville, I think, is as, is as worthy as anybody. Um, Sammy Hale. I'm not really feeling it. Charlie Holliker. Holliker was a really good hitter. Really good. For a shortstop. I mean, Heine Minish have a pretty crazy slugging percentage, but I just find it hard to believe that someone with less than 1,500 hits deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, I'll throw a bone to Sam Rice. 
I don't think it's going to matter, but we're going to try it. I'm going to vote for Ray Shalk as well. Um... I'd like to see Whitey Witt get some love with that offensive line, but I don't think it's going to matter. You know what? I will vote for Lefty O'Doul, too. I think he's been victimized by probably being a pretty bad outfielder. Yeah, he is pretty bad as an outfielder, but that doesn't discount his actual offensive contributions. Um... How can you vote, not vote for a man whose nickname is Bananas? That's pretty awesome. Irish Musil is probably fairly up on the home run chart, which is probably why he's getting consideration. I think I looked it up last time. Um, by the way, OTP, I would absolutely love it. If you would include all-time uh, career leaderboard stuff on here, too. Because you do list, like, notable achievements here. But you don't have career stuff. And that would be really helpful so I don't have to go to the leaderboard screen to see how they did. Um... But I will go look it up because I'm just that kind of guy. Uh, and then we're going to go league history. Where does 198 homers rank? Because that's going to be a big part of whether I vote for him or not. Oh yeah, he's... No, he's not getting voted for. How is he... Oh, he hasn't... He doesn't have enough time to qualify. What was Babe Ruth's war? Just out of curiosity. 154. That's pretty crazy. Uh, that's second all time. Which is pretty wild. Uh, and it doesn't look like anybody's going to challenge him anytime soon. Although Jimmy Fox is rocketing up with those leaderboards. That's pretty funny, actually. I like it. Uh, but what I do not like, however, is voting for Irish Musil, knowing that his 198 home runs just aren't that impressive anymore. They might have been at the time, but... I'll go for Kobaleski. And I think that's it. I don't really think anybody else here... Oh, no. Definitely Doc Ayers. That's not even a question. Um, yeah. This is good. <laughs> Alright, let's talk draft. So... There is one and only one player I really would like to take with the third overall draft pick, which is Stuffy Sternweiss. If I can get Stuffy Sternweiss, I'll be over the moon. If, however, he is not available, and it seems pretty likely that he won't be, as I talked about last episode, I'm actually going to punt on the first round draft pick. I'm not going to sign them so that I can get an even better draft pick next year. There is an argument to be made that I should consider taking Gil Hodges. But because he's 18, it's going to take a while before he capitalizes on his talents. And we want to make sure that we're getting players that can really contribute right now. To the extent that's possible. Am I going to talk myself into drafting Gil Hodges? So let's talk about what he can actually do before we decide if he might be someone worthy of our time and attention. First of all, our scout doesn't like him nearly as much. 
Uh, OSA thinks he's going to be a big time average hitter. Our scout thinks they won't be. Now, historically, he was an okay hitter. Certainly not exceptional, but okay. I really don't see myself trusting OSA that much over my own scout. And this player here, if my scout is right, he's not third overall pick. George Metkovich wouldn't be awful, but again, not third overall pick. And that's what I keep running into. There's only really one player worthy of the third overall pick, and it's Snuffy Sternwise. If I don't take him, I don't think Lou Klein's defense is good enough. Um, so yeah, it's basically just going to come down to that. If Snuffy Sternwise is there, I take him. If he's not, I'll pick somebody else and then just not sign them. Um, so that I can have two first-round picks next year. Right. Now, I would be utterly stunned if Sternweiss did slip, but I, I just don't think he will. Um, so let's take a look. The Tigers. Who are the, who is the Tigers' second baseman? First of all, he's not an outfielder, so we know that the Tigers can't possibly take him. Shit, they're going to take him. Don Calloway is awful. Yeah, he's not even going to get it past. I'm going to hit autodrop for Detroit. They're going to take Sturmweiss, I bet. There he goes. So, uh, I have no real desire to draft anybody. And Pirates took Gil Hodges, which I think is pretty silly of them, but I'll take it. Um, no, George Kyle's not good enough at third base. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I'm gonna draft Pat Siri, but I'm actually not gonna sign him. Uh, so that I can get another pick next year. All right, now we're into the second round of the draft. And I got to say, toward the end of last season, we were really hurting for starting pitching. So I'm thinking Red Munger would be a pretty good choice, and I'm going to take him. And I will sign him. And then, you know what? Joe Wood isn't an inspiring second baseman, but I've certainly seen worse choices. But there's also Don Black, and I think I'd rather have him. Oh, no, I wouldn't. He's 26. Screw that. I think I will draft Joe Wood, and we'll just see how he does in the minors. Bill Burgo. Yeah, all right. Fred Sanford. Ba -ba -ba -da. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da um that's good i don't really feel i mean i guess i should check right i should check to see if there's like a super secret hitting monster and there isn't okay i checked and then we're gonna negotiate and hey there pat you're not getting signed The reason I'm signing these two is because they're both um, 17, which means you have no idea how they'll turn out. Um, I 
can't believe. I'm actually genuinely shocked that Pittsburgh took Gil Hodges. They clearly must trust OSA more than I do. Um, right. Any particular position, we're a little bit thin on right now. What the heck? Oh, I'm looking at Detroit. I was about to say, I don't recognize any of those players. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, that's better. Um, okay. I think Newsom is fine. Billy Rogel really isn't. Like, I don't think I'm going to keep him. I don't know why I even have him. I could use a third round pick, though. Or a third baseman in the rule five. All right, what do we got at third base? Let's actually make a filter for this so that I'm not wasting my time. I'd like you to be at least a 50 at third base to be considered. I'd rather have Charlie Gelbert. Yeah, give me good old Chuck. Uh, and then I can immediately start disposing of it. Would you please quit and give me my own damn team? Uh, right. I think I'm going to trade Pete Fox and I'm going to give Jeff Heath the opening day or I'm going to give either Heath or Sulik the opening day left field job. Uh, I think I can probably get some decent stuff. Oh, I also had Billy Cox. I forgot about him. He wouldn't be a terrible backup third baseman either. Um, let's go ahead and offer Billy Rogel and see what kind of deal we can get for him. All right, I guess that explains that. Uh, Billy, I'm going to waive you. And then we're gonna see if any idiot is dumb enough to draft you. No, they are not. That makes me a sad panda. Um, okay. Phil Weintraub just isn't very good. I'm going to try to trade him, but I don't think I'll get any better than I did with the... Oh, no, I will get a couple of offers here. Jake Jones is a decent defender. Jack Walesa is a Major League Baseball player. Russ Christopher is a really good reliever. Let's go for Russ here. Yeah, I really don't get why my budget space is so low. It doesn't make sense to me. Because our team isn't that expensive. Remember, we're 13th in player payroll. I frankly don't get why we don't have enough money. <clears throat> like, I'm sure it's based on projected revenue because our team was real bad this year. I mean, we're just going to take a cut to the scouting and development budgets. I can't do anything about that. There's no way I can shut enough payroll to actually make a dent in this. <clears throat> the entire reason we look bad is because you're, project you're projecting us to lose a whole bunch of games, which you probably will. I can't do anything about that. That's just the accounting system in the game. I could raise Sega prices, but that's just going to make it worse. So. Um, players to trade. I think Pete Fox would be a good idea. 
<clears throat> if we look at our team now, would losing Pete Fox hurt us significantly? And remember, we dropped, we we got went out from to hit for contact, but Ernie Sulik is only a couple of scotches below him and is a more complete player. <clears throat> so I think we just move on from Pete Fox. And that'll save us some money and hopefully get us a pretty talented rookie. Um, Barney Olson is not the worst center fielder in recorded history. And I do want a little bit of depth at center in case Freddie Lindstrom vanishes. Could I also get Ray Scarborough? <clears throat> Um, who are you? Tappy Ray. Yeah, you're in AAA. But I do like having you in case something happens to someone. Now I'll just take, you know what, let me actually look at their active roster and see if there is, like, a good center fielder now. <laughs> I do quite like Wally Berger, but I don't think he's any better than, uh, what's his face? Why can't I remember his name? I just looked at him. Lindstrom. He's not. He's a definitely a bigger power hitter. But Lindstrom is a better center fielder. Uh, you know, this is about cutting payroll more than anything else. I'm just going to go ahead and make this trade. Um, that's that. Yeah, the problem is if I start trading anyone else, it's going to be someone that I don't want to lose. Um, Vern Olsen is going to get traded. Or turned into a reliever, and I'm not sure which yet. But it's going to be one of those two things. Because to be quite honest with you, 18k from a starter who can't start anymore is just not a good deal. Can I trade you now, or are you still hurt? Okay, great, you're healthy. Uh, goodbye, Vern. Let's get a nice big list of names here and see if there's anybody here that's worth acquiring. Bill Knickerbocker is not that much better than Dib Williams, so I'm not going to bother with that. Buddy Rosar is a really great defensive catcher. <clears throat> okay, right now I'm falling in love very quickly with Irv Dusak. I love everything he brings to the table, and he's extremely versatile. Can anyone do better? Plus, he wouldn't cost me any money.
I just want Jake Jones to get a little bit of extra depth in the minors. Yeah, you can have Cliff Dapper. He's not that dapper. There we go. I'm sorry the fans are sad that Vern Olsen went, but it was the right decision. He's a reliever at this point. And between the minors and my draft, I've got enough starting talent to get us through the year, I think. Elmer Riddle is actually pretty yikes, too. Meh, we'll figure it out. Did all of my draft picks sign yet? None of my draft picks have signed yet. Oh no, they did. It's just the, the one guy hasn't signed yet. So we'll figure that out later on. Yeah, Billy, I'm just gonna cut you. Oh really? Will you go to the miners? You won't, so I guess I am gonna cut you. Yeah, I just have to hope that once the preseason happens that we can get some, a bit of relief from the owner. He's supposed to be charitable, right? I don't know why he set our budget so arbitrarily low. Yeah, I mean, I guess Al Mamo is, oh, he won 300 games. I must have missed that. It's fine. Um... I'm okay with that. I wonder why I'm getting a special thing for that. Did he get draft? Did I draft him for one of my teams? Oh, he played for Brooklyn for a while. That's fun. Uh, now I need to fix my scouting again. See, I'm figuring it out. It only took me like a million episodes of OTP, but I got there. All right, come on, man. Kick up my budget. You fucking cut my budget, you piece of crap. Why would you cut the damn budget? You're already going to lose money. You're basically screwing us so that you can lose less money? <sighs> you suck, dude. I hope you, I hope bad things happen to you, you jackass. Uh, whatever. Um, we've got to deal with what we've got to deal with, and I can't do anything about that. And take me to being in spring training, please. Good. It's nothing against you personally, Pat. It's entirely about the fact that I want a better draft next season. But I have a feeling things will be a bit deeper. Okay. Um. So. Let's start putting some people on the spring training roster. Irv, Mo, Russ. That's a good start. And then we're going to go. Boop. And then I'm going to go. Boop. And then we're going to play through spring training. Damn, son. Putting heat on your fastball is going to get you noticed, that's for sure. Oh, man. Taffy Wright all of a sudden is becoming a contact hitting master. Uh, that's a kind of big leap that's going to get you a chance at a spring training or a, a bench job.
Yeah, this still makes me unreasonably upset. And it's all because you're a little bitch game. I don't know what convinced you that I don't need money. I can't remember if this is in the National League or in the entire Majors. Uh, but I think it is the entire Majors, so. Not Raleigh Styles. Okay. Um. So let's start pruning players from the roster. I currently have 15 play pitchers. Let's cut that down to 11. Um, Rob Carpenter is not a reliever. He is a starter. Please stop making him into a reliever. Um, I would like Bob Carpenter to do a bit more work in the minors before I promote him. So we're going to demote him. Beryl Richmond, uh, I'm just going to cut you. Bill Swift has probably earned another chance to make the roster just because of how clutch he was last season. Um, but then again, we also have Bill Boisel, who could probably do the exact same thing. Uh, I will figure that out here in a second. Yeah, Bill, you were a starter last year. Why are you being rated as a reliever? Oh, that's right, because the game doesn't know what they're doing. Um, yeah, he definitely goes back to the minors. He's got to work on his ability to pitch. I really only need one of Elmer Riddle or Bill Swift. I don't need both. Are you the only spark plug on my roster? I normally don't let things come down to team chemistry. Yeah, we will actually keep him. We will keep him and I'll send Bill Swift to the minors. Bill, I'm hoping someone can look at your performance last season and want to trade for you. No, you're going to be like that. All right. Uh, I will happily waive Mr. Styles here. And what does that put me at? It puts me at 10 pictures. Um, let's add one more. Let's go ahead and get Bill here. No. Bob Carpenter. I think he can get us a bit of a few helpful innings here and there. All right. Uh, catchers. Mike Garrett, you're actually terrible. I don't know why you're even on my 40, man. Uh, miss me with that shit. Ray Mack is wholly unnecessary. I wonder if I can get a decent trade return for him. I don't want to take on any payroll, so Dick Mulligan it is. Holy shit, Ray Mack is earning 10 grand? What the hell, dude? Yeah, that's an easy choice. Um... Mo Franklin is probably never going to make the major leagues unless someone important gets hurt. 
And I would like Billy Cox to play in the minors this season. And we're down to 25. Perfect. Um, and you know what? I didn't want Irv Dusak to make the team, but I kind of like the idea of him getting a chance to do it just because he's so incredibly versatile. And it gives me a quality backup center fielder. Then we have Taffy Wright, who might actually start in left field. I haven't decided yet, but if he can at this damn well, if this number isn't a lie, I have to do it. Like, he's clearly the best hitter among the left fielders, if that's true. Um, and then Lindstrom and Henrik. All right, so let's start putting people on the 40-man that need to be. Christopher and Dusak. Okie dokie. Um, right, let's advance to opening day, and then I'll go ahead and reset the rest of the roster. Give me a chance to finish my drink. Okay, so, <clears throat> owner, you are utterly delusional if you think I can make the playoffs this season. And I think that's maybe why the budget is so low. Like, I think you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh my god, you spent this much money, you must be major, you must be, yeah, you're just delusional is the only word I can come up with. Um... That you're assigning me so low a budget. Because if I do accounting, I genuinely don't see where all this money is coming from other than our payroll. And our payroll is not that high. But I also notice here that it actually still gave me the full budget for both scouting and player development. I don't know why, but I'm not going to question it. I probably could have cut that a bit. And our draft expenses are set way too high. That's another place we can save some money if we need to. Um, all right. So let's start by setting the pitching staff. So we're going to need to do our rotation first, obviously. It's the most important part of our team. Um, Houston is the ace, followed by Blanton, followed by Mulcahy, followed by the rookie, Mr. Munger here, and followed by Roger Wolfe. I know Wolf isn't great, but I think he'd be better than Carpenter would be, at least this first season. Um, so, Carpenter, you're going to be long relief, emergency starter. And Elmer Riddle is going... No, actually, you're going to be emergency starter, long relief, sorry. So that way, Riddle can be long relief, emergency starter. Um, Riddle, I do not want you pitching in high leverage. So then let's narrow down who our different relief options are going to be. <clears throat> We're going to try an experiment. We're going to try making the hardest thrower on the team our, our stopper this year, which is Podgajny. 
and everyone else is going to do middle relief. I will set Tommy as use more often because I think he's one of the other good pitchers on this team, but this is a really good mix. I don't think that Russ Christopher has a big problem getting lefties out. It's going to make him a bit weaker. Oh, he's a Submariner. That's why. That's why. Okay. Pitching staff is set. Let's get this lineup set. And batting ratings. If Tappy Wright can hit this well, I will happily make him a starter in left field. I can't afford not to do it. So we're going to go ahead and put Tappy Wright in the lineup as our number two hitter. The reason they're doing number two is because he's a good all-around hitter, but he's not the best on base guy. That's going to continue to be Augie Gallon, who did exactly what I wanted to from him last season. I'd just like to see a little bit more, but he's perfect. Uh, this is a really killer one-two punch. And now it's time to talk number three hitter. And among my options, I really think it is Billy Sullivan. And again, just like Jim Williams last year, it's not because he's actually the best option. It's because he's the only option. Uh, he's got really good contact and really good gap power. And that'll hopefully help drive in Galan and Wright when they get on base. Or... No, Taffy Wright bats third. His huge edge in contact, plus he's got decent power and a decent batting eye, actually makes Sullivan the better number two hitter. All right, who's batting cleanup? It's probably Tommy Henrik. Of all my possible cleanup hitters, I think he's the best choice for two big reasons. One, he's got good power. Two, he's got great on-base skills. And three, he's done well in that role historically. So Tommy's going to bat there. Uh, Freddie Lindstrom, I will happily have you bat fifth. Johnny Pesky bat sixth. I need a, a second baseman and a catcher. A dib is my second baseman. So he can happily slot in there. Catcher-wise, Phil Mossy is just better. Okay. That is your starting lineup for your 1943 Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit concerned about Taffy, right? <clears throat> because his contact was never that good before. But I'm hoping that maybe it's just he figured out figured it all out. But as he goes, this team will go. And we'll see how things work out. So Ken O'Day is going to be backup. Backup at first base will be... Jeff Heath. Backup at second will be good old Skeeter Newsom. Backup at third will be Charlie Gelbert, because that's what I got him for. And then... Charlie's also, I think, a better... No, Skeeter's the better shortstop. And then they will also back up at each other's... Uh... Yeah, so Gelbert will back up everywhere that Newsom isn't done. Uh, number one left fielder backup is going to be Ernie Sulik, followed by Jeff Heath. And then Heath is going to be our backup in right field. 
and Sulikel back up there. Herb Dusak is our backup at center field, and Sulik is going to back him up. Um, in terms of non-starters, the best hitter is Ernie Sulik, followed by Jeff Heath. And then everyone else pretty much sucks at hitting, but at least Irv Dusak is good at getting on base, so there's some value there. And then Heath and Newsom are our pinch runners. Another one of them is great at it, so that's an important thing to keep in mind as we play. Um, also, Pesky, until you get a little bit better at playing shortstop, uh, Newsom is going to replace you in the late innings. And Ernie Sulik is going to replace... No, I can't replace Taffy Wright. His bat is too important to this lineup. Um, so I'm going to hit copy and copy. I know there's probably some platooning bullshit I could be pulling here. I don't have a deep enough bench to really worry about that. So this is the opening day Brooklyn Rock Dodgers. Are they better than last year's team? An awful lot depends on Taffy Wright. If he could come out and hit like 330 or 340, the whole rest of the team is going to gel a whole lot better. If that's a flash in the pan, then we're going to be in a lot worse shape. I do think we'll have one of the better rotations again, especially thanks to newcomer Red Munger. Um, and we have a bit of depth as well, which we kind of struggled at a bit last season. But there's only one way to find out how it's going to go. Well, you could take one of my starters and immediately injure them. That would be fun. Um, all right. Uh, Bob Carpenter, I didn't want to give you this job, but someone has to do it. You're my new number three starter. And continuing. Charlie Gilbert's going to retire. Good for him. Uh, you two jerks both cleared, so we're going to demote you. Raleigh, are you going to be a little bitch about this? You don't want to be demoted, I bet. Can I trade you for literally anything? I asked for anything. Anything is what I got. Welcome, Bill Kennedy. Um, four weeks for Freddie Lindstrom is pretty bad. I don't really have a backup center fielder, though, other than Dusak, so there's not really a lot of point. No, I have Lindsay Deal, so I'll tell you what then. We will go ahead and put Lindstrom on the DL, the IL, sorry. Um, and then Lindsay Deal will come in to back up and... Dusak will actually get a chance to start. Not how I planned it, but needs must, etc., etc. And then just go ahead and, and give me some copying right there. Yeah, I don't get why the owner thinks we're anywhere near the playoffs. I'll be happy if we finish 500. NL's best batter was Augie Galang. Very nice. Um, I'm not going to make any big changes based purely on what we have now. Don't be thrashing people's nuts. That's not nice. Um, let's wrap, brothers. What do we have in terms of our team's talent level? The offense looks real good in the top three, and then it drops off pretty precipitously. 
Um, Henrik in particular is better than this, as is Johnny Pesky, so I think they'll both start doing better. Um, our defense isn't great. I don't know a lot of that is going to be Pesky. I can't really do much about that. It's too early on in the season to make any big changes yet, so we're just going to go ahead and keep going. Um, and then we'll, we'll go from there when the time is up. Good job, Tax Houston. Game, I said, take me to the next month. Okay, we can get Freddy back. Um, I'm pretty sure, unless Herb has been crushing it, that we want that. We do want that very much. Uh, deal, back to the miners. Lindstrom returns. Um, and then we're going to go... If starter tired, Freddie Lindstrom, and then I'm going to move you up. And I'm going to move you up. And copy, copy, paste, and paste. Done. Moving on. Jeff, I need you to stop complaining. I need you to stop right now. I'm sorry you don't like what's happened to you, but you should try hitting better, and then maybe I wouldn't have demoted you. Oh, Fred Munger's getting a bit better. Augie's getting better. Some decent improvements lower on. And, oh, Jim Bagby Sr. got, or Jim Bagby Jr. I'm going to unshortlist you because I don't need to know that right now. Um, so Tommy Henrik is really struggling. But the rest of the lineup is doing okay. Not Phil Massey, but Phil's getting on base a little bit at least. Um, that's kind of an important thing. Oh, wait, I already knew that he was hurt, didn't I? I did know that. Um, yeah, we're not scoring runs because we're not getting on base that effectively. And really, Tommy Henrik is, is looks a lot better than he should. Um... I don't know why he would be rated with a war of five, unless it's just because of his isolated power and his ability to get on base. Um, this will improve, I think. I think we'll start to see him improving a bit. And I don't really have a replacement for him. Um, yeah, I don't really see an easy way to upgrade. Other than getting Mulcahy back. Um, and having him fully recover. Because then I can send Roger Wolf to the bench. So we definitely need an upgraded catcher. So to that end, do we trade Jeff Heath looking for a better catcher? The thing he's is the number two power bat on the team. And I need him on the bench. Because I don't really have any great power hitters in the minors either. Like, I could call up Peanuts Lowry and he'd be fine as a backup in the outfield. But we'd be missing that extra pop off the bench. And so I kind of don't want to trade Heath at all. Let's just stick to it. 
Oh, you're not coming back anytime soon, Mulcahy. That's fine. I I know that you're both upset, but you're both going to shut the hell up and you're going to deal with it. <clears throat> because you both have important roles on this team. Actually, Ernie Sulik, I will trade you. Because right now you're only a defensive left fielder and you can't hit anymore. What can I get it at the area of a catcher? Auto Denning is awful. Al Lopez is good defensively, but that's about all you can say about him. Ah, uh, yikes. Yikes. Mm. Mm. Feral can it, but can't cash. This is just gross. Um, what if I do all players? And I trade Dave Sulik here. Is there like a top quality player that's being offered? Not really. Teehee, Johnny Dickshot. Um, let us go ahead and check the trade block. It's almost exclusively outfielders. I mean, Mike Krivich would be pretty good for a number of reasons. But he's not that much younger than Freddie Lindstrom. And Freddie's been doing great this season. I don't really feel a need to replace him. Um, Chet Lobbs has some pretty decent power. And a good batting discipline, but that's not really enough. The problem is there's just nobody that interesting on the block. So I'll tell you what. Sulik, I will put you on the trading block. Not you, Heath. Heath, you're stuck with me until I decide I don't want you anymore. And look, the reason the people are complaining is because we're not playing very well. A Gelber, you are a fucking moron. Literally nobody in the history of Major League Baseball would ever start you. Ever. This is all because we're losing. That's why people want to leave. It's not because of playing time. It's because we're losing. And we're not even playing that badly, is the thing. Nice job, Bob Carpenter. You've really been a key part of this team, Mr. Carpenter. Taffy Wright got five hits. All right. How many bros made the roster? Tex Houston made it. Billy Sullivan made it. Augie Galan made it. And Taffy Wright made it. I think four all-stars is pretty goddamn good, and I think you should maybe get off my back about not starting, you whiners. Matt, this is entirely on you, and the quicker you accept that, the quicker everyone will be happier. You randomly decided I don't get any money and you're upset that the team isn't any better. Anyway, um, coaches. Let's go ahead and resign all the minor leaguers. That's an easy choice there. George McBride.
It looks like you've been doing okay. You're great development. And I think we have pretty good staff cohesion, so I don't really feel any particular need not to bring you back. Tom Daly, you will be replaced. I'm not bringing you back. You kind of suck, my dude. But the rest of you can come back. That seems good. And advancing... I mean, Bewildering Ghost is pretty impressive. Well, that is the worst. Um, okay now. All of a sudden, oh wow, there's a lot more names on the, uh, on the trade block now. Hey Wally, want to come play for the Dodgers? Oh, damn, we could get Ben Chapman, maybe? Oh, that would be something special if we could grab him. I'd even play you over Henrik. No, I wouldn't. I think Wally Moses is the better choice, though. Although he's not a great center fielder. Um, he's a better center fielder than Chapman, isn't he? No, Chapman is actually better. <sighs> um, let's see what it would take to get Chapman. Something pretty special. I'd have to give away one of my very best players, and I just don't think that's going to happen. So let's back out right now. Wally Moses. Moses is even harder to get. Okay. So let's look at center fielders. Really game. Oh my god. We're screwed. We're not going to be able to get a new center fielder. Everyone wants like the very best players for him. And McCulloughy isn't coming back anytime soon. <sighs> Freddie. I kept saying it though, didn't I? I kept saying... Gosh, I don't think we have the depth to deal with an injury to center field, and lo and behold. Like, Lindsey Deal is clearly the best center fielder. Herb Dusak is clearly the better hitter. Dusak is good enough, actually, but he's also played really badly. Ugh. Our bench has been awful, without exception. Yeah, I don't know what to do here. Um, I guess I'm going to play the better defender. Because both of them suck. 
So I guess I will play the better defender, even though I'm going to hate it offensively. And then everyone else gets bumped up, I guess. Like, even a Phil Massey is a better hitter than Lindsey Deal. So that's fine. Uh, Freddy. My dude. What the fuck? All right, how bad has Pesky been defensively this year? About as bad as he was last year. Do I trade Pesky? Thirty four. All right, dude. Um, anyway, mm. because here's the thing <clears throat> if we can get a premier center fielder who's relatively young. Would I rather punt on shortstop offensively or, or would I rather punt on center field offensively? That's a great question. Um, so let me... Ben Chapman would not be a bad center fielder. But he also hasn't been an amazing hitter. I guess what drives me nuts is that Mike Kravich is literally getting like, like I have to give them something massive to get him. Like Houston. If I offered you Jeff Ernie Sulik, ah, that's why. It's because the only way I can afford to add him is I'm like trading somebody who's even more expensive. Got it. So let's have a chat about trading Johnny Pesky. Can I get a good player for him? Is there a good young center fielder or any other position really to be had that would transform the team's fortunes going forward? Hell, I will happily take Warren Spawn, but I'm not going to trade Johnny Pesky for him. If you don't want Warren Spawn, I will happily take him off your hands. Here, you want Whiny Sulik? Oh, I can't give you Barney Olsen. I could give you Cox, though. No, Cox is my only emergency third baseman, though. I could give you Jeff Heath, actually. And then see if I can get you to give me something else, too. Uh, you're unfortunately injured, which is sad. 
How about Jeff Cross? That's fine. All right, Warren Spawn. You are a starting pitcher. You will only play at starting pitcher. Get pitching. That could be the steal of the century, by the way, if it turns out the way I think it might. Um, I will go ahead and call up Peanuts Lowry to go ahead and be a backup left fielder. Or I guess a backup right fielder. Yeah, Sula can do it. And then Lowry can play there. And then I'm going to copy, copy, paste, paste. And Lowry, you're going to get some pinch hit appearances. I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> it still doesn't change the Johnny Pesky situation, however. But I think we'll just go ahead and continue for right now. All right. Do we want to trade any other players? Like, getting Mulcahy back is going to be huge, obviously, and I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> but it won't solve the central problem, which is... Actually, do we even have a real problem here? Okay, our zone rating is awful. Who is that terrible defensively? Besides Pesky. I know Pesky is not great. Okay, Herb Dusak is awful. Tap your right isn't great. We basically have a whole bunch of slightly below average defenders. Um, that's something we're going to have to fix. But we can't fix it right now. There's just not a solution to it right now. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of below average defenders. Um, Pesky, if you can't hit 300, you're not worth it to me. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Um, I can't get around that. If you can't hit 300, you are not a good player. Um, and so you may very well get traded in the offseason. Ken, I'm not going to trade you because no one's going to want you. Uh, really? Okay, it's just back spasms. That could be a lot worse, I guess. All right, we get Mulcahy back, which is brilliant. Um, Bill to the Miners. Uh, Mulcahy takes Wolf's spot in the rotation. And Wolf becomes emergency starter. Wait, how is Warren Spawn thrown for over 200 innings? Oh, because I'm making him start. I hope they're not starting him every day, but I think that's what they're doing, actually. Gee, look at that. Turns out that Warren Spawn guy is pretty good. Uh, who could have called that? Oh, wait a minute. I did. Oh, 
All right, we need to fix the defense next season. Um, that's for sure. But first, I need to hope that I get it next season, which right now doesn't sound likely. I got fired for less with the Tigers. That's got me really concerned about that. Yeah, Warren Spawn is, is pretty good. Turns out he, he kind of knows how to pitch. Okay, OTP. I would love it if you would stop having people demand trades when they can't legally be traded. Like, it's just annoying. It's not the worst thing in human history, of course, but it's just annoying that I keep getting my sim interrupted by people wanting trades when they can't legally be traded, and they know it. Um, that's maybe something to do with like, the beginning of the offseason. Charlie, no one is going to start you. Not even me. And it wouldn't be a Brooklyn Dodgers offseason without someone getting hurt. All right, I would like to draw your attention to a very important number. We won eight more games this season, five more games rather. That's going to get held against me, I'm sure. But I think I deserve another, another chance. I really do because the owner is being ridiculous. Yeah, I just don't want you to make any money. Like, dude. Skeeter, shut the hell up. I'm so tired of these backups being like, ooh, bring me back. Um, I'm losing my triple A pitching coach. How sad. We'll have a big party for him. Good for the Cubs. Do I get fired? I did not get fired. Yeah, see, look at this bullshit. You can have a payroll of $100,000. Fuck you. Freddie Lindstrom is gonna be going pretty gonna be going to the Hall of Fame, I think. Yeah, this has to be a bug. That randomly he decided I can pay like twenty thousand dollars to my players. It's obscene that he thinks I can just slash payroll and be more competitive. I can do some of these things, Matt, but it seems like you're making the classic business mistake of raising your profit margins rather than improving your product. And that's not how money works. You can't just say, I'm going to give you a payroll of $10. I want you to win the World Series. It's never going to happen. So I'm just going to continue to ignore you. Um... Given that the council has made a stupid ass decision, I've elected to ignore it. Um, yeah, if you want to fire me, fire me. But I am not going to be able to achieve a total balance of zero dollars. Like, I can't cut payroll that much. Or you're going to fire me for that. So I'm pretty much trapped no matter what happens. Um, we're going to have to draft super well this year. And... We have the number one overall pick and the number four overall pick. If we take a quick peek at the draft pool, let's see who might be available to us. Really? 
This is it? Oh my god. Um... How can you do this to me, game? How can you have this god-awful a draft class a second year in a row? So this is not great. Um... Like, Eddie Yost was pretty good historically, right? He was an okay player. But this is not... Oh, my God. Oh, I am so screwed. I have two top five draft picks, and there are zero players in this draft worth the top, worthy of a top five pick. Yeah, I could take Frankie Zack. Is he better than Pesky? I don't think he is. I could take Granny Hamner if all I cared about was great defense, but they can't hit. Oh my god. This is such an awful draft. It's the worst. How do you do this to me, game? Why do you hate me this much? Like, let's track OSA. OSA really likes Joe Nuxhall, which I guess is fair. Yeah, this is awful. Um, I'm going to do it again. I'm not going to sign either of my draft picks. There is no player worthy of a top five pick in this draft. I'm happy to get a quality player in the second round. But I'm not going to waste a top five draft pick on any of these losers. Um, if I needed pitching, I'd consider Joe Nuxhall. Maybe. But yeah, this is, this is not a great draft either. I think part of this is the World War II problem, because obviously World War II is going on to this point in real life. Um... That's fine. I can't do anything about that. But what I can do something about is the god-awful nature of the players you're inflicting upon me. Because um, I'm not going to do it. I am not going to draft. I'm not going to waste a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get a generational player on a player who frankly doesn't deserve it. I mean, is Pat Siri better than Tommy Henrik? Maybe. I don't think he's enough better to trade for him. Although Tommy Henrik probably needs to be replaced. Am I going to fucking talk myself into drafting Pat Siri? Game. Why do you do this to me? Um, let's talk about how players did this season. Uh, no, don't give me your gross version. I want a good version. So Billy Sullivan was great. We got him for a full season, and he played extremely well. No complaints there. Augie Galan continues to impress and play extremely effectively. 
He's exactly what you want from a leadoff guy. Perfect. Taffy Wright. We handed him the keys to the offense, and while he wasn't great, he definitely proved that he's a capable hitter, and that went quite well. Dib Williams continues to be decent. He's not exceptional, but he's not bad either. Phil Mossy managed to put up a full win. That's pretty nice. Tommy Henrik, you can't do this. You cannot play this badly and expect to be capped. So he's getting traded. Johnny Pesky. I've got to hope I can sucker somebody into taking you and giving me something quality out of it. Because if I can get a great second baseman, center fielder, or catcher for trading you, or even a better shortstop, I will take it without hesitation. All right. This is gross. I think I'm going to take Siri again. Mm. Where the hell is Pat Siri in your draft? There is no way in the seven hells that Pat Siri falls to the third round. If he did, I would be over the moon. But it ain't gonna happen. Um, Augie wouldn't be a bad player either. Hal Joan Frito isn't terrible, but again, it's not a very interesting choice, I don't think. Like, there is plenty of risk in taking Pat Siri. If his discipline and contact never develop, he'll never be a good player. And that's the trap, right? Things have to go perfectly for Siri to be a great player. I think I'm going to keep the first overall pick. I'll pick somebody random and then not sign them. And then if Siri doesn't get taken, I'll take him with the fifth, the fourth overall pick. But man, game, how can you do this to me? Oh, uh, let's trade Johnny Pesky before we end the episode. Shot players, all batters. I'll look at prospects and regulars. Let's go. Ha 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 You had me for a minute there, but no. Pete Suter isn't that much better than Dib Williams. No, maybe. Eddie Lake is a maybe. Let's keep looking. Wayne Ambler, no. Johnny Rucker, absolutely not. We're trying to get better, not worse. Where's that one player? Johnny Rucker. No, not Johnny Rucker. Fuck him. He 
He was a guy I said that I would come back to. Where is he? Oh, it was a shortstop. It was Eddie Lake. That's right. Yeah, Eddie Lake is a really great defender. He's really good at getting on base, which means he'll at least be useful offensively. But what if I could get Lake for less than that? What if I could get Lake for Henrik? That would give me so much more flexibility because then I can move Pesky to another position or trade Pesky for someone else. What if I offered Pesky and Henrik? Does that change anything? Can I get like a truly exceptional player? Not Sam Chapman, he can't play center that well. I could still get Eddie Lake, so that's good news. No. No. And a big old batch of no. What if I just have Pesky or Henrik here? My options are going to get worse because I can't afford players. I feel Cabaret is not terrible. He's not great either, but he's also not terrible. <sighs> I'm going to have to have a good long think before I make any trade offers. Do share some thoughts in the comments down below about what we can do to try to make this a more palatable situation. I've got to get better defensively. Um, that has to be a priority this offseason. I can't afford to sacrifice too much offense for the defense's sake, but I definitely need to get better. I definitely need to get better. I mean, I guess I could take Granny Hamner first overall, but they're such a terrible hitter. Like, yeah, it fixes some problems, but then it creates way more problems. And again, we have the same issue, right? That their errors are still going to be quite high. They're still going to make lots of goof-ups. I don't know. It's a big fucking mess is what it is. And man, my gut is telling me save the draft picks and hope that the other rounds can help you fill some of the holes on the team. Because it's like, I have the chance, if I can keep these picks until there's a great class, to get, like, dramatically better overnight. Um, like, fucking guys like Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle are right around the damn corner, I think. And wasting a first overall pick on a Pat Siri just seems gross to me. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna pay very close attention to your comments, my friends.
Um, and I'm going to hope that you can give me some advice about what we should do because I'm going to get fired if I turn in another 63 and 91 season. But I think Pesky has to go and Henrik has to go. Those are not optional. Those are going to happen. It's just a question of getting the best possible player for them. But of all the years to have two top five picks, this is like the worst possible year. Anyway, that'll conclude this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, this has been Avindian, and I bid you good day.